Hey everyone, this is George Carlos, and welcome back to Mindset Monday. Hey, this is uh, season two, episode 10, and it's kind of weird because I am actually recording this on January 3rd. Uh, so today was the release of the first episode of the new season, and I got a lot of really nice positive comments, and I'm really excited about it. And what I've decided, and this is kind of the process of what I'm doing, is uh, I'm going to release this in season. They're going to make this like kind of like curb your curb your enthusiasm uh, and uh, just kind of going to go through um, that process of just kind of thinking about stuff uh, and sharing it. And I record these ahead of time because I do travel and I just kind of like, what am I thinking about? What are some of the stuff that have kind of really helped me? But what I've also been doing is I've been working on a book and as I'm kind of working through this book, I'll actually take each episode and then I'll put notes about it and I'm trying to compile these stories and then eventually this is going to become uh, my book called One Day at a Time Repeated and just kind of taking the first season the second season kind of putting it all together uh, in one book and I, I'm excited to release it because it's going to be a lot about learning uh, there'll be some aspects of education but I think it'll apply to the general population and it's something I've really been passionate about is that we can, um, we always in education learn from business, but business doesn't tend to learn from education. But you think about how valuable the lessons we have in education, how incredibly important they would be for business, the, the notion of always learning, always adapting and figuring out new things, something that we teach all the time. Uh, working within constraints is something I think is really, really valuable. And it's obviously something educators do to a fault, to be honest with you. And I think that there's a lot of things that I can share with others, but you know, I kind of want to go through this process in, in creating this stuff. And so I've just been really uh, excited about um, the reception to Mindset Monday. It was just kind of like done on a whim, but people just really appreciate it. And I, I got a comment today um, and I don't have it in front of me, but it was really kind of, uh, it, it really, I appreciate it basically thanking me for sharing these episodes and someone who doesn't listen to education podcasts like myself, but they listen to mine because uh, they see that the ideas kind of transfer. And I, I like to try to think about how these lessons apply, you know, in, in different regards. So uh, thank you for being on this journey with me. Thank you for kind of going through this process. And I'm really excited, um, you know, to get that book out to the world. But that's kind of, I didn't really intend on this becoming a book. I didn't really intend on this, but I thought, hey, you know, I'm always kind of creating stuff and going through this process. And I think that's kind of the whole idea of today's episode is really how do you actually go beyond consumption to create? How do you actually apply, you know, um, what you learn and, and what do you actually make with it? And when I wrote uh, Innovator's Mindset, I, I, I'm very proud of that book. And I've written other books as well. But Innovator's Mindset is like, is like my baby, right? That's kind of where it all came together. But I actually started blogging about 10, 11, 12 years ago. And the, the, it was never with the intention of writing a book. Never, ever. I had no idea that that would ever come to fruition. And I think I just wanted to understand that process of learning to actually take ideas, you know, kind of dig into them, go through that so I could understand it as a principle so I could best help my students. Really, how would they do this? How would they connect it? And I, I started getting this creation process and I really kind of loved it. And what was really important about that process was I actually use blog my blog to learn not to share my learning and i think there's a difference in what i just said is that i sometimes just wrote whatever was on my mind these podcasts i have a couple notes that are written in front of me but i just kind of talk and just kind of like delve into ideas and try to talk them out and i kind of just make that process transparent but it helps me kind of develop and what i noticed that when i was writing my blog i kept coming back to this notion of innovation and and what it meant, why it was so important. And I think it was partly because it was an interest of mine, partly because uh, it became my job uh, in the work that I was doing. And I think it became my job because it became an interest of mine. But as I started to write more and more and more and kept coming back to this topic over and over again, I thought, you know, there's something here. There's something that I like through this process. So I never started my blog to kind of promote innovation to think about this. I wrote my blog to kind of just dig into my own ideas. And then I actually figured out what ideas connected with me most. And this is something maybe I do to a fault that I, I actually really focus on 
the notion of creation, like listening to topics. So if I go to a conference, um, I will skip a lot of sessions. And it's not because I'm not learning. It's because I'll listen to a keynote or I'll listen to a presenter and something will really kind of hit me and really kind of stick with me. And then I'll kind of go away to some space and I'll start digging into the ideas. And I want you to really think about this and think about how valuable this would be to education, business, whatever. What if we actually focused on fewer things and, and really went into them, went into them and really thought about them deeply as opposed to trying to do everything. And so I, this is something I suggest to people all the time is that we need more time to process, to reflect, to share our reflections, to kind of connect with this. But it actually, a lot of times in education, we do the opposite. We just bombard, bombard, bombard with information. And we do that, um, we do that to our students, we do that to ourselves. And so it's something that's really important to me. And it reminds me of kind of thinking about some of the other aspects of my life where I've kind of learned how important it is to take ideas and then put them into action very quickly. And I've shared this many times. I, I was a basketball referee um, for several years and I, I loved it. I love refing and I uh, got all the way up to doing college basketball here in Canada. And when you get to a certain level, what happens is you actually are being evaluated pretty much every single game. And people don't really realize this, but you're refing a game and there's an evaluator sitting somewhere in the stands and they're watching you and they're writing notes or going through the process. And at halftime, you'll go to a locker room, the evaluator will come there and it's so short. You got like 10 minutes, right? Before the game starts again and they rip you apart. They just go at you, tell you, you did this thing wrong, this thing wrong, this thing wrong, this thing wrong. There's no, there's no uh, positive sandwiches, right? And uh, where we say like, hey, I really like that you did this. You know, we could have worked on this, but this is really great. And by the way, positive sandwiches suck, right? Because everyone knows that the insult or the negative thing is coming. And so no one's really listening to the positive thing before and no one really cares about the positive thing after because we know what's going on, right? Where you're kind of trying to butt us up. For me, I want, you know, I want recognition, but I, I, I get that. <laughs> But if you got some feedback from me, just give it to me because I, I tend to lose that stuff when I, because you can kind of read when that's happening. And like I said, at these, these referee times, there's no time to like do that. You're, you're, you get feedback immediately and then you go out and what's expected of you is that you apply it, that the feedback that you got during that process is, is actually, um, is it, do they see it not like weeks from now, not months from now, like the next half, are you implementing it? And the referees that actually did the best that move the quickest and, you know, tend to move up were the ones that they saw that, you know, applied the feedback and tried the thing that was suggested at halftime. It didn't mean that they actually always held on to it, but they, they at least gave it a legitimate go. And they thought about this. And so something that I think about, like think about how many times you read a book looking for an answer to a problem that's very specific to you. And we don't just stop and necessarily reflect. Like think about this podcast. What are you gonna do with it after? Are you, are you listening to it? This is the, the reason I actually, I haven't even recorded all the episodes yet, but I wanted to save this one for the end. And the reason why I wanna save it for the end is if you've been on this journey with me, have you just been listening or have you been taking this? Have you been maybe taking an idea that I've shared and then digging into it, sharing it on Instagram, sharing it on Twitter, you know, blogging about it, writing in a journal, anything. Have you actually utilized this or do you just wait till the end of the episode, think about it and then move on with your day? And how valuable would this be to our own development, let alone student development in, in our classrooms? And if you, if you see a lot of blog posts and, you know, uh, as I said, I'm recording this at the beginning of the year, and what happens usually at the end of the year, people will like share like how many books they've read. You know, they had a goal for reading a hundred books and, and going through that process. And that's great. That's good. But like, are you competing in jeopardy? Is that, is that the, the premise of why you're just bombarding yourself with all this information? And I'm not saying don't read a hundred books, but I could never read a hundred books in a year because I need some time to think. I need some time to process. I need some time to write, reflect, create my own information, make my own connections. And so I actually think it's way better to, you know, read three to five books per year, but really dig into those three to five books. Really like, do you blog about them? Do you kind of go into it? Do you, do you know them inside out? Or do you forget the ideas from the first because you're so quickly moving on to the second? 
right? And that's something that uh, I'm really encouraging people. And, you know, this is the end of the season. And will you take some of this information? Will we create? And not just this Mindset Monday, the other podcasts that you listen to, the other blogs that you read, the, the simple one minute Instagram post that might kind of spark something in you. Do you let it spark something in you and sit with it for a while, connect to it and, and dig into it? And I, I always try to think about this in a professional and a personal space. And here's the professional aspect of this. As an administrator, um, I, I, I would do teacher evaluations. And I, I remember one specifically, and I was, I was frustrated because there was some growth that needed to happen. And no matter the feedback I gave to that person, they just weren't having it. They were, they were good. And this is at the beginning of their career. And, I, and, I, and then, by the way, I don't think like I'm the, the most knowledgeable person in education and you should listen to everything I'm saying. But I'll be honest with you, I was the administrator, right? I was the one who was writing the evaluation, sharing it. And none of the feedback, and this wasn't just me, uh, it was also my admin partner, none of the feedback w- was sticking. And I look for something what I call, uh, and I think it's super important to me, not only in when I was hiring, but who I work with is what I call the sponge factor. Do you absorb information in, hold it, and then share it back out in some manner? Or is it just kind of like, you like repel it to new ideas and kind of thinking about that process and and how do you actually like connect that and share and so uh, i always use this analogy when i'm talking to administrators so you're hiring someone new and for those of you watching on youtube you have someone at this level you know of you know of ability and you have someone at this level of ability right so who do you hire right the one that's higher or the one that's lower and everyone knows it's a trick question right and the thing is there's not enough information in that question because the really important aspect, some people, they might think, oh, well, of course you take the one that's better, right? And I think for me, the, the missing question that's so imperative is which one is willing to grow? So if one is at an incredible level already, but they're still willing to grow, that's who I'm taking, right? Someone who's already just really great at teaching, but is still willing to learn from feedback to, to develop, to grow. But if someone's at a point where they're really good and they're like, eh, I don't really need to learn anymore, I'm, I am where at, the other person's going to surpass them eventually. And I, I remember my parents actually uh, used to say that when they would hire at the restaurant, this is something they looked for too, as they would hire people uh, often that had never worked in the profession that were willing to learn because they didn't have to like untrain some bad habits out of them, right? They wanted people that were willing to learn that sometimes um, once we get to a point where we think we're good, that we're, we're there, then, then that's it. And I think that's really kind of connected to how we learn. And so on the personal aspect, I think this is something that I think about too. You might be watching this right now and saying like, hey, this is great. You know, George is a podcast, blah, blah, blah. But who, like, who am I to have a, who, who am I? Who am I to have a podcast, right? And, you know, people I, I've connected with people on Twitter and Instagram and they'll look at my following count. And to be honest, your following count means nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. I have learned um, a ton from people who don't even touch social media. And I'll tell you, some people that have tons of followers, I, I don't pick up anything from them, right? But if that's what's, getting your, that's what's getting into your head is like, understand this. Every person that's ever started any social media, anything, always started with the same amount of followers that I have. Same amount of followers you started with, zero, right? And the thing is, is that I don't ever focus on what will people really like to hear? What will people, you know, want to this? I think about what do I have to share? What am I interested in? And the really kind of neat thing about that is people will always learn from those ideas, right? People will find you and, and connect that. And I look at people that are in certain situations and I, I'll tell you, I, I can get jealous. I, I really can. And I, 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 I wish I would say no, that doesn't exist to me, but I'd be lying. And so would you, by the way. Um, And so one of the things I wrote about is really kind of when we look at the success of others, I I made this chart in, um, in innovate inside the box, adapting it from uh, uh, the growth mindset coach. And I went a step further and I talked about what does the innovators mindset look like when you're following the success of others. And I said that others, people's success is learned from and something we modify and imply in our own context to create our own success. So I'll give you an example of my personal life. I love to, I, I, I look at a lot of fitness influencers because I'm really kind of focused on my health. 
And I used to get really frustrated because I'm like, well, they're, they're, they're on, uh, you know, they're probably on steroids or something like that, or, you know, they're genetically gifted. And I actually saw something the other day on TikTok, I think. And it was kind of funny. It was a joke, obviously, but it's like, um, who, like, how can you tell if someone's on steroids? Uh, because they're, they're more fit than you are, which I thought was kind of funny. It's basically like, yeah, well, obviously they cheated, right? Like, that's why I'm not there is because they kind of got to a certain place because they did this, right? And I thought it was kind of a funny thing. But what I've learned to adapt and try to figure out is like, okay, what is that person? What are some of those things I can learn from that person that I can take and apply? So sometimes I'll see a video on Instagram about fitness. And the kind of thing is that if you just scroll to the next video, it doesn't really matter. But then I'll like save it and then I'll try it and I'll see what I can do, see how I can connect it and how it's helped me. And that has been a huge shift for me is taking ideas from others. And sometimes, sometimes I share it with you. Sometimes I do it in private, but I, but I try to do it as much as possible because this is something I want my kids to see is that I was willing to take risks. I was willing to try new things. And especially in the realm of education, um, we are often really consumed with the idea of, of consumption right? Which is kind of ironic thing to say. We're always trying to take in more information, take in more ideas, right? And it just kind of pop into my head. I remember I spoke at a conference and somebody said to me, hey, like, um, I saw you speak about a year ago and I saw that you're, are you talking about the same thing? I said, yeah. And it was a totally new place. Probably 95% of the people had never even heard of me. And I said, yeah, well, most people, they've, they've never seen me talk. So, you know, obviously it's going to be new to them. They're like, well, what I saw it last year, so I, when do I get to see the new stuff? And then I said, what did you do with the old stuff? Like, did you, did you do anything with it? And they kind of were thrown off by the question, but I really pushed them there because you heard it. So what, what did you do with it? And how do you create it? And I think that's what separates a lot of people is not that they read a hundred books. It's that they maybe read a couple and then they do stuff. They, they, they jump into action. They throw this. So here's my challenge for you as, you know, the end of the season. And it's not like I'm going to stop creating or things like that. But I just wanted to, you know, this, this one, this one's becoming kind of my baby. Mindset Monday. I, I love it. I love doing it. And I wanted to, I want to take these ideas, put them together, try to create something from that process. And it will be coming out soon, uh, that book. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And I, I hope, you know, you, you look into it when it comes out. But the, the hope of the book is not that you just take it, read it. The hope of the book is you create something with it. The hope of this podcast, you create something with it. So I'm going to challenge you. You've been listening to these podcasts. You've been here. Maybe this is your first time. Maybe go back. Maybe go back and see this, right? And listen wherever you're at. But what will you create because of this? What will you do? And don't don't get caught up in like, it's got to be a Twitter. It's got to be a pod. Not, don't do that, okay? If it is, great. That's awesome. If it's like, hey, I want, you know what? I'm going to start a podcast, right? Don't get, don't get bogged down with the notion, is anyone listening, okay? If I got worried about that, I would have never put this podcast together in the first place, right? Uh, it's like who, you and my mom. That's who's listening right now, okay? I, but I think it's better f- for you. For me, the reason I love doing this podcast, I love people listening. I love that, you know, so many people have been cheering me on as I go through this process, but it's a way for me just to kind of sit and think. And I, I think if you're watching this, you can kind of see sometimes the, the light goes on when I think of a new story and kind of connect it. But it's, it's why I want to process this. And after I'm done this, what I'll do is I'll kind of write some extra notes, things that I do. And I'll take that. I'm going to try to write a book, create this. What will you create because of this process, right? And so I hope that, Um, when season three starts of Mindset Monday, when when season three starts, um, I would love this, that you have a bunch of comments of like things that you created because of this Mindset Monday, things that you started doing, right? Uh, Brian, uh, Brian Carpenter, I'll give you a really good example. He's such a good example of this, by the way, Brian Carpenter, who I know is listening to Mindset Monday right now. Boom. He takes this and he just, he actually, he'll like go and do a walk and talk and he'll take those ideas. And it's kind of neat to see him like how he does a podcast based on listening to other people's podcasts through a walk and talk. It's a great idea. So I hope you create something with this, um, you know, and, and just don't overthink, don't overthink it. I think sometimes that's our biggest flaw is that we, we, we get so caught up in our own minds that we just stall. And so I hope you jump into it. If I, uh, I, I tend to overthink a lot of things. Um, 
after the fact, after I created it. And I think that's okay. So jump in. I can't wait to learn from you because I think, hey, it's awesome you're here learning from me. I'd love to learn from you too. So what will you create? Because I say, how will you take what I've shared and create something new with it? Create something really powerful. Because I think what's important to me is that we listen to each other. We hear each other's ideas, but we go create something with it too. So I hope you enjoyed that episode of Mindset Monday. I hope you enjoyed the season. Um, I'd love to hear from you, you know, you know, something, what, what was even writing a comment of something you took away from today's episode, um, this year, but uh, I'll try to be back season three. I'm planning to do it in at the beginning of the school year, because I know that's probably a time that it's a little bit tough. So we'll see how that goes. But, uh, thanks for being here with me, this episode of Mindset Monday in the season of of Mindset Monday. I hope you enjoyed it because I really love sharing these ideas with you. Thanks again. And One last time, thanks for being a part of Mindset Monday. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for all you do. Take care.